Okay, we're going to talk about the uh, Stern Gerlach experiment, and I'm going to use this visual to help do that. Okay, the force on a magnetic dipole by a magnetic field has been well characterized by the year 1920. It was established that the force, therefore the degree of deflection, depends on the angle between the magnetic field, more precisely, precisely the magnetic field gradient, and the unpaired electron's magnetic dipole moment which can be visualized as a tiny bar magnet and often represented by an arrow that points from its south to north pole, like we see here. Since the atoms flying out of the oven are randomly oriented, a magnetic field will make some atoms deflect up, some down, and some not at all. As such, the narrow beam shown in this diagram was expected to broaden into a fuzzy smear in the direction along the magnetic field as shown in the middle diagram. The blue arrows show the orientation of the dipole mo moment that is deflected to the corresponding part of the red smear to its left. Instead, the beam was observed to split into two sharp beams as shown in the bottom diagram, implying that the electrons are restricted to only two distinct orientations, along or opposite to the magnetic field, which for convenience we call spin up and spin down. This experiment discovered two surprising things. The atom, specifically the unpaired outer electron, did have a magnetic dipole moment. In effect, in addition to being charged, electrons acted like tiny bar magnets. They also, as it developed, have a tiny intrinsic amount of angular momentum. This quantity is called spin, and all known elementary particles have non-zero spin. Electrons are called spin one-half particles. The second surprising thing was how much the path of the electrons was deflected. If electrons were really bar magnets, they could be oriented in any direction. The component oriented along the magnetic field gradient, say the z-direction, would determine the force on the electron, and hence how much it would be deflected. If electrons are like ordinary magnets with random orientations, they would show a continuous distribution of paths. The photographic plate in the stern gerlach experiment would have shown a continuous distribution of impact positions. What was observed was quite different. The electrons were deflected either up or down by a constant amount in roughly equal numbers. Apparently, the z component of the electron spin is quantized, which means it can only take one of, of two dis discrete, discrete values. We say that the spin is either up or down in the z direction. 